Ontario Senator Lynn Bayak is under fire again for comments and advice to Indigenous people. Last week, the Conservative Senator published an open letter on her Senate website. Senator Bayak advised First Nation members to trade your status card for a Canadian citizenship with a flair and with a fair and negotiated payout to each Indigenous man, woman and child in Canada to settle all the outstanding land claims and treaties. A note here, Indigenous Canadians are Canadian citizens. Bayak went on to say, none of us is leaving, so let's stop the guilt and blame and find a way to live together and share. All Canadians are then free to preserve their cultures in their own communities, on their own time, with their own dime. Bayak is also standing by previous comments that we should have focused on the good parts of the residential schools over the years. Conservative Senate leader Larry Smith issued a statement in response saying this, the personal opinions expressed by Senator Lynn Bayak do not reflect the positions of the Senate Conservative Caucus. Accordingly, we have taken steps, additional steps to address Senator Bayak's ongoing role within our caucus. The mayor of Winnipeg has asked her to resign. So, what should happen to Senator Lynn Bayak? Should she be sanctioned for her beliefs and comments? Or is it a dangerous time when expressing a contrary personal opinion can result in loss of position? Let's turn again to our Sunday scrum. Susan Riley, John Ibbotson, and Katie O'Malley joining me from Ottawa. Susan, let me start with you this time. Where are you on this? Well, first of all, she's a senator, so she can't be fired unless she's found guilty of an infamous crime. Um, and so there's no way that she's going to be kicked out of the Senate. Um, she's already been disciplined by the Conservative Caucus for her previous remarks. She's been taken off the Aboriginal Affairs Committee in the Senate. Um, Andrew Shear said the other day that he's, he, you know, he, she will be, she'll be demoted or she'll be other other certain caucus privileges will be taken away from her. But he stopped short of kicking her out of the Conservative Caucus so that she sits at a, as a, an independent. My take on this is this. Um, you know, she's not calling on people to burn down villages, um, but her message is, is definitely assimilationist. And it's, uh, it's a message that, um, it's, it's a policy that has hurt, you know, caused a lot of hurt uh, and ruined relations uh, between um, Canada and uh, the First People. So, so it's, a, it's a message that's, uh, it's, a, it's an ugly message for a lot of people. In a way, though, I think she does a service every time she brings up one of these, one of her suggestions. She, she forces things out in the open that a lot of Canadians might be thinking privately. And then you listen to the counter arguments, you get the context, and you think, oh no, that, that is so wrong. Um, so, so I think in an in a, in a indirect way, it's, uh, sh she's educating Canadians, but she, that's not her intention. Mm -hmm. But that's the impact. The marketplace of ideas. John, what do you <laughs> think? Uh, well, it, it sounds as though they're on their way to expelling her from caucus. That, of course, is the decision of the leader. Uh, if I were uh, Mr. Shear, I would write her um, a long open letter and say, here is why you're wrong and, and here is why I disagree with you and here is why what you say is antithetical to the values of the Conservative Party and to my values as, as leader. It would perform the education function that Susan talks about and it would help us to have a clear understanding of where Mr. Shear is on these issues um, as, as Conservative leader. But look, let's not kid ourselves. These views, which I completely disagree with um, are common uh, outside the hill and and the elites and the academies um, and the better restaurants uh, they might even be the majority of you among um, at least what Stephen Harper used to call the old stock Canadians uh, and if we try to suppress those views if we try to try to, to just say you can't say these things anymore then we're telling a great many Canadians that they are illegitimate, their opinions are illegitimate, and they're not being respected. And we know where that can lead. At the end of the road, it can lead to something like Donald Trump. So let's have the debate. Let's discuss it. Let's, let's prove to Senator Batters why she's wrong. But let's not delegitimize people who hold these beliefs, because a lot of people do. Katie. You know, I'm just, I'm just sitting here trying to decide if I agree with John or I don't agree with John on this. And, it, and it's a tough call. I think, first of all, it's really important to sort of stress that um, 
even kicking someone out of caucus is not suppressing their views. It's saying, okay, if you're going to express those views, you're not going to do it aligned with us. She still, even after that happens, she would still be a senator. She would still be permitted to, to stand up and speak. I mean, heck, in the newly independent, dominated Senate, she'd have pretty much just as many opportunities to do so, at least in the chamber, as she does right now. So, I mean, on that sense, I think it's, we, you got to keep a little perspective here in, in the sense of, we're not talking about her being hauled away and put in jail for expressing these views. We're, we're talking about a question of, does she get to sit with the other conservatives or not. Um, on the larger issue of whether or not it's a debate worth having, that might be the case, but I'm not even sure if that's actually what Senator Bayak is trying to do. I almost get the sense that she kind of liked being infamous. She kind of liked the attention that she got when she made her initial comments, and now she's trying to sort of keep that alive and keep that going. It's entirely possible she does believe she's speaking for, um, you know, a silent majority, a silent minority, what have you, and that she is deliberately doing that because it does get the attention and it does kind of get the controversy. I think that for, for Andrew Shear, this is a, a, a pretty big test for him because he has to decide, first of all, whether or not it's okay to express that view in his caucus, which once he's made that call, he has to either defend his decision to keep her in or remove her. And that could have ramifications in terms of other people who aren't so thrilled with it. So to me, it's almost a, a good example of caucus management, leaving aside the issues themselves. Yeah. Senator, and can I just say, I think I think we should also note that, you know, this is an all-white panel. Um, so the, yeah. <clears throat> the hurtful remarks that that Senator Beck and other people have made uh, don't affect us in a personal deep way necessarily. Um, so we can look at it from a distance, we can be more sanguine, we can say, well, great, this is a wonderful debate to be had. But um, it's very uh, painful and punishing for a lot of people, which, which probably has to be acknowledged somewhere. That well, being said, I think Katie's right. Um, you know, being kicked out of the Conservative caucus does not mean she's being silenced. Yeah, let me, let me uh, on the pain issue, let me bring to you what Senator Lillian Dick, the Liberal chair yeah. of the Aboriginal People's Caucus, had to say on this. Quote, the more I read her letter, the more upsetting it is. She's in a very solid state of denial, and it's bordering on racism. Who the heck does she think she is telling First Nations what to do, telling us what's good for us? Trust me, I know. That's absolutely the epitome of colonial thinking. That's how we got into this mess. She's using her Senate seat to voice opinions that are really off the wall. Should I go and tell her to give up her Canadian citizenship? What do you take from that, uh, from uh, Susan, what, uh, what Lillian Dick had to say? Uh, powerful. And that is the, that is the um, unintended good that has come out of this whole situation. Um, you know, here's an ardent, well-argued case, uh, which... Uh, she she doesn't she's not personally abusive or, or anything she just she just takes on the argument and I think uh, essentially decimates it yeah let me just I just one more thing and I want to just pull you on this and let's keep it short because I'm already at time the personal opinion this is from Larry Smith the personal opinions expressed by Senator Lynn Bayak do not reflect the positions of the Senate Conservative Caucus accordingly we have taken additional steps to address Senator Bayak's ongoing role within the caucus Look at that line for me and tell, tell me if you find something uh, worrisome about that. The personal opinions expressed do not reflect the positions of caucus. Therefore, additional steps will be taken to address her role, some impact on her position. If you were to take that and apply it to anyone else or everyone else, or does it set a dangerous precedent? Katie. I, I don't really think so, no. I, I mean, I can see how it could, and I guess we're going to have to see what those consequences are. But the reality is that there are some issues on which, no, you are not free to say whatever it is you want and remain happily in caucus. I can think of any number of, uh, particularly on issues to do with race, to do with culture, mm -hmm. to do with d sex and gender. I, I mean, there, every caucus has its own lines and its own sort of parameters beyond which you can't do it. But again, the, the consequences is not being in caucus. There is no charter right to sit in a caucus. It, it's simply you make the decision to, if you feel that strongly, perhaps you shouldn't be sitting in that caucus. Right. You still get to say and think the things, though. Okay. Do we have a dissenting opinion? There's no, no financial so, no. penalty okay. either, is there, Katie? Right. Like, I yep. don't think... I don't think there's any financial penalty penalty to the senator. No, you know. I, okay. I mean I can't think of one. Maybe there is that I'm not thinking of. But All the right. thing is that the yeah. thing is, a personal opinion is the stock and trade of a politician, uh, and mm -hmm. if you're going to express these opinions, there are consequences to those acts.